Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers alcohol dehydration. This is part one, an overview and mechanisms. We'll look at an overview of alcohol dehydration on this slide. Here's a generic alcohol. It has an alpha and beta position as shown here, so we can mark the alpha and beta positions just like we would at an alkyl halide that might be undergoing elimination. The difference here is that the alcohol OH hydroxy group is a poor leaving group because it would leave as a strong base. So this isn't gonna leave on its own. It needs a little help. If we protonate that hydroxy group, it converts it into a good leaving group. So this is the purpose of the acid catalyst. This leaving group here now is good because it'll leave as water, which is a weak base. This molecule is now set up to undergo elimination reactions where water is the leaving group. The elimination reaction can occur either by E1 or E2 to produce an alkene with a carbon-carbon double bond between the alpha and beta positions and water as a coproduct. Hence the name dehydration. Water is being pulled out of the molecule. Tertiary and secondary alcohols react through the E1 mechanism. That's because tertiary and secondary carbocations can form. They're stable enough to form. However, primary alcohols react through E2 reactions because primary carbocations are just too unstable to form. The next couple of slides will cover these mechanisms. Tertiary and secondary alcohols react through the E1 mechanism. The E1 mechanism was discussed extensively in prior videos in the context of alkyl halide reactions, so you might want to take a look at those if you're a little fuzzy on how E1 works. This is an overview in how it applies to alcohol dehydration. The key factor with tertiary and secondary alcohols is that carbocations are stable enough to form with these species. Here's a representative alcohol that is a tertiary alcohol. And the acid catalyzed process is shown here with a generalized acid HA. I'm going to redraw this structure with all the hydrogens in place so it's easy to see exactly where they all are. This structure has an alpha position that the OH group is attached to. It has two equivalent beta-1 positions, which are the methyl groups. A proton on either one of these could be abstracted to give an equivalent alkene product. And then there's a beta-2 position, which is unique. The OH group, again, is a poor leaving group, so it needs to be protonated in order for a reaction to occur. The alcohol will grab the proton off of the acid catalyst, and that'll produce protonated OH group. But now we have a good leaving group. The leaving group can leave, and since this is a tertiary substrate, the carbocation that forms would be tertiary, and it's stable enough to form. This species now can be deprotonated by a weak base, and the best weak base we have in the system is water. So water can deprotonate the molecule at one of its multiple beta positions. One option is for water to deprotonate one of the beta-1 positions, and if that happens, that'll give a double bond between the alpha and beta-1 positions, and the beta-2 didn't react. The other option is that water could deprotonate one of the beta-2 positions, and if it does, I'll represent this in blue ink, the double bond ends up between the alpha and beta-2 positions, as shown here. This elimination reaction follows all the same rules as the E1 reactions that we've discussed before, which means that it follows Zaitsev's rule, and in this case we have two alkenes that have different stabilities. The upper alkene is a disubstituted alkene because it has two carbon groups attached. The lower alkene is actually a tri-substituted alkene, and by Zaitsev's rule, that'll be the major product. The upper product is minor, and the lower product is major. On the next slide here, we'll discuss how primary alcohols react through E2. The E2 reaction was discussed extensively in prior videos in context of alkyl halides, so you might want to go back and take a look at those if it's a little fuzzy. This is an overview on how it applies to alcohol dehydration. The big thing with primary alcohols is that carbocations are too unstable to form. Here's a primary alcohol, and it has an alpha position here, which is the carbon that the OH group is attached to. And then this particular alcohol has one beta position, shown here, which has two protons attached. Again, the OH group is a poor leaving group. It won't leave on its own. It needs some help, and if there's an acid placed in with this alcohol, the acid can protonate the alcohol. It's now a water species, which is a good leaving group. It'll leave as a weak base, but the water leaving group can't leave on its own because it would leave behind a primary carbocation, which are just too unstable. So primary carbocations can't form, and therefore you don't get E1 mechanisms with primary alcohols. Instead, what happens is an E2 elimination reaction. And one of the keys with E2 is that the leaving group and the beta proton that's being abstracted have to be anticoplanar. So as long as that can happen, and it's shown here that we have one beta proton that is anticoplanar, as long as it can achieve that geometry, an E2 reaction can happen. Water here will function as the base, and the E2 reaction proceeds when the base abstracts a proton off the beta position. The electrons flow to form a new bond between the beta and alpha positions, and the leaving group leaves. 
that gives a carbon-carbon double bond between the alpha and beta position and water as a coproduct. There are certain requirements for acid catalysts in dehydration reactions of alcohols. You should learn to spot acids, which are abbreviated HA here, that are suitable catalysts for dehydration. This slide goes over this. Here are some requirements for the acids that need to be used. They need to be very strong, first of all. They have to have a low water content. Many concentrated acids have a large amount of water. An acid like that would not be a good choice. There are a lot of acids, though, that have very low water content, and those are the ones we're going to pick. The other thing is the conjugate base of the acid, A-, should be a very weak nucleophile. Here are some acids that fit those qualifications. One example is sulfuric acid, H2SO4, which has this Lewis structure. Sulfuric acid has two acidic protons, and it is a powerful acid. It has a very low water content, and it's very effective at dehydrating alcohols to give alkenes. Another acid which gets used a lot for dehydrations is tosic acid. Paratoluene sulfonic acid is its full name, tosic acid for short, and it's abbreviated TSOH, where the TS refers to everything except the OH. The structure of tosic acid strongly resembles sulfuric acid. It has an acidic proton on the oxygen here, and if you just study this molecule, pretty much the whole right-hand side of the molecule is resembling sulfuric acid. So this is a very strong dehydrating acid. It happens to be somewhat soluble in organic solvents, which is one of the reasons it's popular and it gets used a lot. Phosphoric acid is another strong dehydrating acid that's shown here. It has three acidic protons that are shown with blue circles here. You should learn to recognize these acids, and when you see an alcohol placed in with one of these strong dehydrating acids, think elimination mechanism. Then, study the structure of the alcohol. Decide whether it's a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol, and that'll tell you what mechanism to expect, whether it'll be E1 or E2. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series, or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.